Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is how to calculate your pet's calorie needs. Now pet obesity is a pretty big problem in the United States and elsewhere in the world, and this is usually because our pets get overfed. It's super easy to overfeed our pets, what with treats and table scraps, not to mention those feeding guidelines on the pet food label are actually super inaccurate most of the time. So the feeding guidelines or feeding charts, just like we talked about in How to Read a Pet Food Label Part 2, they are usually a rough estimate and they don't take into account things like your pet's body condition score, activity level, or other factors. So, learning how to calculate your pet's calorie needs are actually going to be the best um, and most accurate way to determine how much your pet should be fed. So, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to go through this complex equation um, to calculate just how much your pet needs based on factors like signalment, uh, body size, like body condition score, and activity level. So hang on, this video is pretty in-depth, um, but we're gonna go through it slowly, step by step, um, and we're gonna, we're gonna get you there. Um, just a note, this is only for healthy adult pets only. So if your pet is uh, still growing, like if it's a puppy or a kitten, um, if your pet is a pregnant or lactating mother, or if your pet has a disease process, then you're definitely gonna wanna talk to your veterinarian um, so that they can help you customize your pet's calorie needs. So we're going to start off with what is called the maintenance energy requirement. The maintenance energy requirement is the number of calories the pet needs to consume each day to satisfy all their metabolic needs. So here is that equation. MER equals RER times signalment times activity level times body condition score. These are all called factors. That's what I'm going to be referring to them as throughout this video. So factors like resting energy requirement, signalment, activity level, and BCS are a numeric value. So they're all given a numeric value, but they do all have meaning. So resting energy requirement is the first one, RER and we'll talk about that soon. Um, that is simply the number of calories the pet needs for basic metabolic needs, so just like simple breathing and sleeping. Signalman is going to be if the pet is a dog or a cat, or if they are intact, or if they've been spayed or neutered. Activity level refers to if the pet is inactive, active, or very active. And body condition score is going to be if they are underweight, overweight, or ideal body condition. We're going to go through each of these factors step by step, and just a little tip, um, I would suggest that you might want to write down each of these factors um, as we go through and keep track of what your pet's numeric value is for each factor so at the end we can bring it all together. Before we begin with the maintenance energy requirement equation, we're going to have to convert your pet's weight from pounds to kilograms. So in veterinary medicine, using kilograms is a standard of measurement and it is actually usually more accurate. Also, the equation was designed for using kilograms, so it's gonna make the equation a little less complicated. So one pound is equal to 2.2 kilograms. So in order to convert weight, to, weight in pounds to weight in kilograms, you're simply going to divide the weight in pounds divided by 2.2 and then you're going to get the weight in kilograms. And you're always going to want, to want to round to two decimal places for greatest accuracy. Here's an example of a cat's weight conversion from pounds to kilograms. So Raven weighs nine and a half pounds and 9.5 divided by 2.2 equals 4.32. So Raven weighs 4.32 kilograms. This is an example of a dog's weight conversion. So Bruin weighs 65 pounds and 65 divided by 2.2 equals 29.55. So Bruin weighs 29.55 kilograms. So the second step is looking at RER. RER is your pet's resting energy requirement. It is the number of kilocalories your pet needs each day to perform basic processes like breathing and sleeping. 
it doesn't include any additional needs for signalment exercise or body condition because that's the MER equation. So this is just that one portion of the MER equation. Here's the calculation for RER. RER equals 70 times BW to the 0.75 power. BW simply means the body weight in kilograms. The 0.75 is to the power of 0.75. So when you're doing this on a scientific calculator, you can use that little carrot um, or a little upward facing arrow. Or if you're using a smartphone, you can use what looks like X with a superscript Y, um, and that will be the same exact function. So here is an example of a cat's RER. Raven weighs 4.32 kilograms like we just determined. So 70 times 4.32 to the 0.75 power equals 210 kilocalories per day. Here is an example of a dog's RER. So Bruin weighs 29.55 kilograms and 70 times 29.55 to the 0.75 power is 887 kilocalories per day. Now we're not done yet, we still have quite a few more steps, but this is just the basis of the resting energy requirement for an animal if all they did was sleep and breathe all day long. All right, so the next step is looking at signalment. So signalment is just the term that we use in the veterinary profession to describe a pet's species and reproductive status. This is because cats and dogs have a different energy requirement, and intact pets are going to require more energy than spayed or castrated pets. So the factor in the far right column is the number you are going to put into the MER equation. So whichever factor match, matches up best with your pet's signalment is the one you're going to want to write down. The next step is looking at activity level. So exercise is going to play a huge role in how many calories your pets need to consume. Pets who are fairly inactive require much less energy than pets who are constantly exercising. So write down the factor that best matches your pet's activity level. The final part of the MER equation is looking at your pet's body condition score. To learn how to body condition score, go and check out my video on how to body condition score. Body condition scoring is another key factor when determining how much a pet should consume because overconditioned or overweight pets need to eat fewer calories so that they can lose some weight. Underconditioned or underweight pets need to eat more calories so they can put on some muscle and fat. If your pet is underweight, definitely talk to your, their usual veterinarian before following this formula. There might be a disease process happening that could affect their nutrition requirements. And similarly, if your pet is overweight, talk to their usual veterinarian before following this formula as well, because rapidly decreasing anyone's calorie intake might be detrimental to the pet's health. Once you've determined which factor matches best with your pet's body condition score, Write that factor down and get ready to put it all together. So now that you've been keeping track of all of your pet's factors, you can now input them into the MER equation and calculate how many calories they need to consume per day. I'm going to go through my two examples that I've shared with you. First, Raven the cat and then Bruin the dog. So for example one, we've got Raven. So for I've got the equation listed out here, and these are her numbers. So MER equals 210 times 1.2 times 1 times 0.8. So for her RER, I've calculated that already, so I've inputted that 210 kcals per day for her resting energy requirement. For her signalment, she is a neutered adult cat, so her factor for signalment is 1.2. For her activity level, she is fairly inactive. She's a typical cat. She sleeps most of the day, so she gets a factor of one for activity level. And then for body condition score, she is an ideal body condition score right now, but she has been obese in the past. So I have given her a factor of 0.8 here because she is prone to obesity. She is prone to gaining weight. When I put all those factors together and multiply them out, 
I get a maintenance energy requirement of 202 kilocalories per day for Raven. So that is the number of calories that she should consume each day to keep her at an ideal body condition score. Here's my example of Bruin. So Bruin is a, an adult dog. So I have put out the equation again here and here are his numbers. So his maintenance energy requirement is 887 times 1.6 times 1.2 times 1. So just like with Ravens, I'll break it down here. So for the RER, I've already calculated that obviously. So I've input the 887 kilocalories per day resting energy requirement. For his signalment, he is a neutered adult dog, so he gets a factor of 1.6 for signalment. For activity level, Bruin is moderately active. He exercises a couple of times a week, so I've given him a factor of 1.2. And then for body condition score, Bruin is an ideal body condition right now, so I've given him a factor of 1. When I multiply all of those factors out, I get Bruin's maintenance energy requirement at 1,703 kilocalories per day. So that is the number of calories that Bruin should be eating each day to keep him at an ideal body condition. So now we have to go an extra step. So after we've calculated kcals per day, we have to convert that to something that we can actually measure. We can't measure out kcals. We have to use something like cups or grams. So um, most pets who eat kibble, uh, using cups is a pretty easy measurement to go with, so that's what we're going to do first. So we're going to convert kcals per day to cups per day. So all you have to do for this is look on the bag of pet food and see how many kcals are in one cup of food. The equation for calculating how many cups your pet is going to require per day is kcals per day divided by kcals per cup, and that's going to give you cups per day. So I've gone through two examples here um, for kcals to cups. So for the example one, Raven gets 200 kcals per day and her food is 427 kcals per cup. So in total, she's going to get 0.47 cups per day. Bruin requires 1,703 kcals per day and his food is 475 kcals per cup. So he needs 3.59 cups per day. Now, as you can tell, these are not very nice measurements. They don't go well with your standard food scoop. So they're not gonna be very accurate if we try to use a regular food scoop. For accuracy, we're gonna convert cups to grams in the next step. Converting kcals to grams is going to be the most accurate way that you can get a measurement that you're going to be able to measure out every time and make sure your pet is getting the same number of kilocalories each day. So there are two options for converting kcals to grams. You can look on the pet food label or call the pet food manufacturer to find out how many kcals are in a gram of food and use option A or you can find out how many grams are in a cup of food and use option B. So based on whatever information you find out you're going to pick which option fits best for your situation. So option A is going to be a little simpler and option B is just if you don't know the kcals per gram. So option A is kcals your pet needs per day divided by kcals per gram of food and that's going to give you how many grams your pet needs to eat per day. Option B is kcals your pet needs per day divided by kcals per cup times the grams per cup and that's going to give you grams per day as well. So I have done out each of these examples, uh, one for Raven and one for Bruin. So option A, I've used Raven. So I know that her food is 3.8 kcals per gram. So I've divided her MER 202 divided by 3.8 and that gives me 53. So she needs 53 grams per day. It's a very easy measurement and it's going to be very nice for me to just measure out on a gram scale and give her that accurate amount each day. For Bruin, I've used option B. So I have pretended that I don't know how many kcals per gram his food is. So I have done option B. So I've done his 1,703 kcal requirement per day divided by how many kcals are in a cup of his food, which is 475. Then I've multiplied that amount by 112 grams per cup. 
and that gives me 402 grams per day. So again, this is going to be a nice easy measurement for me to simply measure out on a gram scale and give him that accurate amount of food each day. Just a few quick notes before we wrap up. Um, I do want to mention that this formula is a generality for most pets. So a lot of pets do great on this formula and some pets do need to be readjusted. So this formula isn't a one size fits all, but it definitely is a little more accurate than those feeding guidelines that you're going to find on the pet food label. So after you start this new feeding regimen, you're going to want to reassess your pet's body weight and body condition score two weeks after you change their caloric intake. Obviously, if your pet has a sudden or drastic change in body weight or body condition score, you're definitely going to want to see the veterinarian um, before that two week mark. But um, two weeks is generally the time frame that you're going to want to reassess your pet's body weight and body condition score and then readjust the formula accordingly. So if your goal is weight loss or weight gain for your pet and they are on that trend, you're definitely going to want to reassess every two weeks. You're going to want to update their body condition score so that factor and then you're going to want to update their body weight so in the resting energy requirement you're going to want to change that as well so this is going to help you um, continually update how many calories your pet's getting so they're not staying on that same plane if you are having trouble regulating your pet or if they're just not losing or gaining the way that you want them to you're definitely going to want to talk to your veterinarian and again like I said, this formula is for healthy adult animals only, so if your pet is still growing, if they're a pregnant or lactating mother, or if they are very overweight or very underweight, or if there's a disease process going on, you're definitely going to want to talk to your veterinarian as well before you start any calorie changes. Thank you so much for watching this how-to video about calculating your pet's calorie needs. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Check out that video description below where I give you links to a couple of online calorie calculators if this formula is a little bit too in-depth for you. Um, and there's also a couple of extra reading materials down there for you as well. Um, don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns or any suggestions for future videos. Next time, we're going to be talking about assessing your pet's poop. Say bye, Raven!